Yo, man, um, Terrell Hall of Fame, D-Line, TBKC, and all that sweet, beautiful, wonderful shit. And I, uh, I apologize in advance for any um, aggressive um, messages that you might see. I want to get back to my educational shit. Some of you will understand. Some of you will think I'm just the angry Portuguese black man or some shit. But it is what it is. You don't mess with a person's family. It's just that simple. But <clears throat> let me tell you all this. We're, we're going to get the live in about, about these pockets, and I'm going to progress up through this uh, whole thing. But I want to just talk health, right? And it's not, uh, this is not going to be a video where I talk about the registries and all this shit, just the health of your dogs in general and the importance of it. And what I'm talking about is not just your basic health, but the line that is drawn. And y'all have heard me talk about this. And the line that is drawn is this. Um, I'm a big bodybuilding fan. Um, not, I'm not a bodybuilder, but I guess I could be. I lift and diet like a bodybuilder. But <laughs> um, in the bodybuilding world, we, we've, we've unfortunately seen um, a lot of people die, you know. A lot of the big heavyweights dying, you know, um, different things, liver failure, a lot of organ issues, uh, a lot of times the heart, different things of that nature. And uh, not to pick on the bodybuilders because the power lifters uh, suffer uh, the, the two. And I bring up those two classes of people as athletes is because it's becoming more and more serious in both sports, you know, um, the weight issue, getting too big, how how much size can your frame take? How, you know, and I know some of you are like the steroids, the steroids, yeah, steroids can play a part in it, but really a lot of the health issues are attributed to just the sheer size that these guys carry. Muscle is very, very dense, and believe it or not, muscle is harder on your heart than uh, fat can be sometimes because of the density and the level of nutrition that needs to do it. This fly is driving me crazy. <laughs> but, um, you know, the reality is, is that we have to find a way to um, get an understanding of the way nature works. If you look around nature, pretty much it has a way of fixing itself that anything that starts to get too big, you know, it sort of shuts it down. It's, it's just not something that's going to happen. If you look at the Belgium cows where they had the double muscle genes and they get real, real, real big. If you look at the health problems of the of the, um, of the Belgium cows, it's amazing. They have a ton of them, you know, and they're not functional. They don't live the longest of lives. They're just impressive to look at. Now, it's it's something that we've been doing to these bullies. And I'm just going to be honest with you. The bully has a breaking point. You know, um, of course, using one of my boys, uh, Denzel. Denzel, you know, at his peak, Denzel was a very thick little dog. You know, he got up to 78 pounds on a 14 and a half inch frame. It was very, very thick. You know, y'all see some of the old pictures where he's sort of bolted up and he looks really good and muscled. But at the same time, I have no doubt in my mind, one of the reasons that he lived so long is because of the dropping of the weight. You know, keep, uh, me keeping his weight at a more normal weight as he got older. Um, Throughout the normal life uh, of these bullies, what we're seeing is that there is an extremely high amount of weight being put on these frames, some through genetics, some through the supplements. And I think we have to ask ourselves a question. How much does the size mean? Because you can have a very well balanced dog that is big, that looks good. Uh, you know, Pokemon was a big dog, looked good, lived a pretty long life. Um, you know, I could go down a list of, of very, very nice dogs that lived, you know, nice long lives and had decent size on them. You know, uh, Pratt Sway was just a monster. That dog was big, you know, and he had and, and, and you know, he lived a long life. Uh, you know, we can go down the line of some of the dogs that carry good size and live long lives. But the, then we have the thing of this extreme. And I think that's where the line gets crossed because you rarely ever see the quote unquote extreme dogs look comfortable. And what I mean look comfortable is as they start to move, they can still breathe through their nose. 
they, you know, their movement is very, very flowing and good. Most extreme dogs don't. Most extreme dogs, you'll notice they don't have good bend in their joints, so it looks like they're sort of walking on their tiptoes. They immediately go into a, a, a distressed breathing to where they're breathing a lot harder than the other dogs. Uh, the shorter muzzle doesn't help that situation. A lot of them have issues with the palate and different things of that nature, and it's stressing the dog out. And more importantly, and you guys have heard me say this before, it's stressing the heart out. The heart, you know, needs the heart needs the oxygen, you know, and uh, the the heart is delivering, you know, the oxygen to the rest of the body, you know. So it's it's all um, it's all a necessity. And as we cut down the air supply and we increase the demand of red blood cells uh, and oxygen supply throughout the body, the dog is dying. You know, it's no way that we can create a dog that is extreme and actually make the dog very, very healthy. We can push the limits, you know, Mandela pushing the limits. You know, um, there are some other nice dogs who are very, very thick dogs that could run, that can move, and a lot of y'all have them, and they push the limits. But I will tell you, one of the things that I've noticed about the dogs who do well with the very, very thick frame is they have very good breathing. You know, some of them might have uh, a little more pronounced muzzle, not the super, super short chopped off muscle or whatever the case may be, but they do well. Like I have several dogs that tip over 100 pounds and they sunbathe and they don't have a problem uh, doing so. And it's more so the way their cardiovascular system is built up that the heat just doesn't affect them. But do I feel like that these dogs are capable of putting on even more size and they're not and they're not affecting their cardiovascular system. I don't know. And 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 as of I've, I've watched this breed develop since the start being, you know, one of the guys. Um I really don't believe that we can push the line much further. I have not seen anybody who has been really been successful at going past a certain level of, you know, thickness. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of you have incredibly thick, well-balanced, good breathing dogs, but I think you're at the line. You know what I mean? I think if you're one of these people who are blessed enough to have a 16, 17 inch dog that's carrying 110 pounds, 115 pounds, just big boy, you know what I mean? Moves well, doesn't have a big issues with the heat and the breathing. You're right there at the line because I would bet heavily that if your dog is 115 at 16 inches, which some of you say that you have dogs as big like that, which I've had, you know, I've had a dog that's big like that. You know what I mean? Uh, now he's a little thinner, but it works. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Mandela never gave me problem with the heat, you know? And now, you know, being an old lazy dog is just whatever. But even at his biggest, he didn't give me a problem with the heat. Denzel, in all of his years, I never had an issue to where I had to worry about him. Um, excuse me. About him, you know, being sprayed down with a hose or anything like that. But it seems to be that if there's a line that once you go past it, if you get that 16-inch dog that's 115, which that's a good weight. That's a lot of weight. That's a big boy. And you take it to 16 inches, 130. Do you think that that extra 15 pounds of mass would sit well on that dog's body? It would look crazy. You know, the neck would get big. You put muscles everywhere. But how well do you think that your dog would be able to function is the question. And I think we have to be responsible as breeders and in this breed to understand that everything hits a certain breaking point. Everything hits a settling point to where we have to say, we've made it. This is right. The size that we need. We can't go past that. The rear is good. The the angles are good. You know what I mean? Overall confirmation. Everything's fitting each other well. The dog's healthy. Everything's together. That's it's a point in a line where we have to draw that in the sand. And um, I think one of our major problems is we just don't have those limitations or those lines. Everybody wants to be bigger. And there's a big alarm right now. I said I wasn't going to talk about registries or anything, but there's a big alarm with what's going on with the registries and some of the people involved who want to push the double XL world as their own and act like that they're doing this. And when I say there's a big issue, I'm talking about some big name breeders that I've recently talked to, some of them that y'all might be seeing sharing my videos. But they're, they're alarmed because some people have put in work 
to stay away from health issues and certain things that go on with other dogs. And now as the double XL world continues to grow, there's a fear that if you expand it the same way with this extreme, extreme double XL, extreme double XL, that their dogs will break down and become worse and worse too. Not only that, worse and worse temperament and other issues. A lot of uh, concern is being brought into this and at every level of dog, we need to figure out what is the breaking point? What is gonna make the healthiest dog? You know, I'm gonna pound you guys with health, 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 and that, and that, that includes temperament. You know, and you'll see that I'll talk more about that in the next video, but in order for us to get past some of the things that we see going on as we enter this crisis point with, with these dogs, we have to figure out a way to present a good a quality product. It is very, very um, scary what's going on right now. You know, y'all seen me talk about it on lives with the veterinarians and different things like that. But where is this thing going? How bad is it going to get? And are we the reason? And yes, our community is definitely the reason. And we can't point fingers and we can't blame the government and we can't blame the veterinarians for the issues that are being caused in our community because we're not policing the community and we're not doing things the appropriate way to make our dogs more presentable and acceptable, uh, you know, in these different entities. But we'll talk about that soon, man. Just think about the breaking point. Think about the fact that there is a such thing as too big. There is a such thing as too much. You want your dog to be balanced. You want your dog to be healthy. You want to find that point to where your dog is fine with the amount of mass it is. To the, the make it bullier thing will kill the breed off, I promise you. Until next time, much love. Peace.